It's great to see everyone. Um, it will not be a surprise to my colleagues at the state for me to explain my affinity for the Downtown Re Revitalization Initiative. I'm of the opinion that this program is among our most impactful due to how it can be used to contribute to the transformation of the smallest village or how it can be used to contribute to a boost in a larger city. It's about the kind of strategic thinking that makes the right public sector contributions that get private developers confident about investing and citizens excited about their community. And nothing is more gratifying than visiting a completed project with roads redesigned, buildings restored, and streetscapes alive with activity. It is a powerful program, but for me, the best part, honestly, is not just about the winners. My favorite part is seeing the cities and towns that submitted but didn't win, and how the process of participating in a valuable strategic urban planning effort has built unprecedented momentum in their municipality. The community reflects on the questions from the DRI committee and the feedback from the state to reconsider and redefine aspects that didn't meet the standard. Eventually, the, states get, the state gets an even better application that is an absolute slam dunk to select. So I congratulate this year's winners, but I'm also excited to see all the revised applications that come from the downtowns that didn't win, and I expect to see you on the podium next year. When I look at DRI as well as the rest of the work of the RADC, I view our responsibility to be moving our region forward by thoughtfully considering investments in economic development, cultural assets, community efforts, and placemaking. But none of that works without leadership. Trust me when I tell you that this governor has all of that covered and is doing it with the type of coordination and cohesion that will make this state much better than the sum of its parts. On behalf of the RADC, I'd like to thank the governor for her continued support not only for this project, but for the hundreds of projects we have in progress. She's an incredible leader, and having a governor who is intimately involved and understands the potential for our towns and villages is so wonderful and so valuable. I'm proud to be working on her behalf. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Governor Kathy Hochul. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Eric Reich, I wanna thank you for your leadership of the Regional Economic Development Council. Uh, this is the body that makes the decisions and the recommendations and does all the assessments. And, and so you, uh, those of you who are winners, you wanna thank Eric and everyone. I'm gonna ask the members of the Regional Economic Development Council to please rise and thank you for all you, come on, come on everybody. Stand up, stand up. Uh, uh, we have great representation from the individuals here that they also represent. I also want to acknowledge uh, Paul Brown, who is, uh, represents the working men and women who build these projects. So, Paul, thank you for all you do for uh, us, us on this particular body. You've been serving a long time, but also for what you do for the region, so thank you. Uh, we have some great leaders here, and I'll be talking about each of their communities with a lot of affection. Uh, but first of all, Mayor Willie Rosas. Uh, you'll be hearing from him in a couple of moments, but we've been through a lot together. And uh, you know, I come out to places like the marina often. I try to sneak into town, call up the mayor to go to Dimitri's for uh, breakfast or a cup of coffee, and you know, you're always there and you serve this community so well. So Mayor Roses, let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> Randy Shaler, our mayor from Wellsville, a beautiful community that I've come to know very, very well. I had a family of members live down there and they always thought they lived in God's country. It's so beautiful down there, the, the, uh, the natural beauty, the Alleghenies, the, all the assets. And so uh, to uh, Randy Shaler, congratulations to your community as well, although you don't know what I'm congratulating you for yet. <laughs> Thanks for just coming here today. <laughs> uh, to Lynn Ruda, the mayor of Lancaster, we've walked your streets many times, and I'll go into uh, my knowledge of a community. For, I have another family member living in Lancaster, so we have a big enough family. We have somebody everywhere, so it's... It's great to be back once again, but you know, we're here in Dunkirk, and I know the world was paying attention to something that happened a little further north on a cold day, starting at three o'clock, uh, and I was proud to be there. I was proud to see the energy in that stadium, the love of the Buffalo Bills, win or lose, they are beloved by all, they're an inspiration. And uh, when Damar Hamlin came up on the screen, I think all of our hearts just stopped. 
and knowing that God has given him the gift of life, and he's going to use that, he told me as we spoke, to inspire others and to tell his story to people who may have you know, not realized uh, that he believes it was the power of prayer that allowed him to live. I agree with him, and he wants to show his gratitude by helping young people in underserved communities know that they have a better destiny. So I, I, I want you to know, regardless of a score, you know, they're our team, we love them, and next year, the Super Bowl. So. <laughs> but as I was sitting there thinking about the wind and the snow and the cold, I'm thinking, how long is this winter going to last? How much longer are we going to endure a brutal, record-shattering winter? And the world will await on February 2nd to see what Dunkirk Dave has to say. <laughs> right? Right? Right. Now, I, I've, I've kind of lobbied Dunkirk Dave. I actually went and visited him off-season one summer. I was in the neighborhood, dropped by to make sure he's being taken care of. His owners love him. I do, too. Uh, but Dunkirk Dave, come on, give us a break. <laughs> uh, so we will uh, be waiting to see what he says about it. You know, Punxsutawney Phil, Staten Island Chuck, great, great animals, I'm sure. Uh, but this is our own hometown, Dunkirk Dave. And so, um, but it's also, I think about the game, the region, Dunkirk Dave. I think about a region that is known for something incredible, and that is its resiliency, its toughness its ability to come back after adversity. And we've had that story in Western New York from the Southern Tier in Allegheny County, Chautauqua County, up to Erie County, because I lived it. I've been a lifelong Western New Yorker. I know all these communities so well. I know what we went through. Those of you who are as old as I am, and there aren't many in this room anymore, as old as I am, but I remember when Jack Kemp was the quarterback. <laughs> That's how long I go back. We got knocked down. A lot of businesses left. For most of my younger life, all my siblings trying to figure out their career, where they're going to go, it was not Western New York. They all wanted to stay. They wanted to raise their kids around family. They could not because there were not enough jobs. And that was a heartbreak. We exported, our greatest export was our human capital. We spent, sent our smart young people to other states and other communities and let them build up. But I am so proud to have lived long enough to see a complete reversal where people want to live here. They understand the quality of life we have in our, especially our smaller cities, our little hamlets, our villages. And you can't put a price tag on the quality of life of raising a family in these areas. Um, and that sense of community that's so strong and powerful, that's what we have here. That is a gift. We must cherish it. We must never lose that. But also be willing to open up our doors to more opportunities for others and businesses that want to come in and young people that want to graduate from our you know, great institutions like Fredonia, you know, that they can live right here, Alfred State, <laughs> Alfred University. Let, uh, we have great, great assets here. And that's something, you know, sometimes you live here a long time and you get a little jaded and you just wonder everything else better somewhere else. I'm here to tell you, I've seen it all. There is nothing better, more tougher, more resilient, and more loving than the people and the places in these communities that we're going to be recognizing here today. So, so we have lost a lot. We also gained a lot. Because I see and I feel a comeback. It is an extraordinary story of comeback. And I love what I see. We've had some gr job growth in places like Dunkirk over the last few years and other areas. Because people are starting, you know, the cold storage facility, pharma is going to be reaching its full potential. I know that. And because of the people who believe in these communities, and I'll start with Dunkirk, who love the community so much, they came together to put together a vision with the mayor and said, we can do this. If we put together a vision for the future, not dictated by Albany, we don't want that. I get it. I was in local government a long time. But what our people want, what our community wants, and that's the beauty of the DRI program that Eric spoke about, is that we have the opportunity to execute your vision, give you the resources to make your future, your dream, actually become a reality. And that's why I'm so proud to announce that Dunkirk has been awarded a $10 million downtown revitalization grant. Emily, now stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Because I believe when it comes to Dunkirk, you ain't seen nothing yet because it's position. And I'm a boater, a new boater, 
last few years. Uh, the beauty of Lake Erie, but its communities that dot the shoreline, like Dunkirk, have such potential. And it's almost like they don't realize how cool they can actually be. And it's, it's that faith you need in yourselves, but take it from someone who's traveled and seen waterfront communities. We have everything we need to just launch into the future. Even the little boardwalk the shops, I've been over there many times, and I just went to Dimitri's again this morning. They have really good eggs. <laughs> uh, I, asked, I met, met Tony in the kitchen, of course, all the gentlemen sitting there, the 89-year-old who was at the game yesterday. Uh, I got to know everybody. They're all wearing their bills clothes. So proud. So I, I love to hang out in places like that because you get that sense of being grounded. But they also love this community. And to know that there's going to be investments uh, in them as a people and to be able to take advantage of this magnificent location on Lake Erie and keep our marina strong uh, from being battered by the winds and, you know, restoring the historic downtown district. I mean, we have great bones. We have great buildings. You know, the, the old buildings, where a lot of them got covered up during what was inexcusable, the 1970s, when they plastered over all these old brick buildings. What were they thinking? I'll never know, but uh, we're peeling it back. We're trying to bring back our downtowns and make them shine like they did a long time ago. And also be a real destination for, for tourists and local visitors, the day trippers, the people who are going to also discover this region as a gateway to the the wine region, and uh, the largest contiguous conquered great region in the world. Do you know things like that? I know all these things. <laughs> we have all that. I and mean, this is Dunkirk's position, not far from a major city, but also close to the many attractions. But I want to thank all of your members of your planning committee for, for putting forth a vision to create a sense of place and, and that is genuine and authentic. You know, we'll never be one of those cookie cutter communities with everything looking the same. We're starting to see that. A big article in the news the other day that you can't tell the difference when it comes to housing between Seattle and you know, Austin and other cities because they're all building the same. We can never let that happen to our beautiful villages and towns and cities here. So we're going to create that authentic experience and be a catalyst for just organic growth but also attract others and make sure that we're very inclusive in what we do, welcoming people, you know, the, the new immigrants who want to you know, just plant the flag like their grandparents, the grandparents and parents of many of us. And I know your mom's still in Puerto Rico, right? She doing? A, she okay? I know she was. We were worried about her during the hurricane. So, um, Mayor Rosa, she mentioned developing the marina. Um, we know that this marina needs to be strong and needs to attract people. We also have to continue working you know, to have some fun options. I've always long believed that if you have a downtown brewery, the rest. Of it. The rest happens. It just, it just happens. Uh, an indoor water park. And I know you have so many ideas and some visions. So, you know, you, we know that these ideas are brilliant. They're great. That's what the community wants. And I'm really proud that we'll be able to put the money behind them. So we'll work with you over the next year. And less than a year from now, we'll be back to announce specifically what projects have been funded. We leave planning money in the award so you can bring in the experts to help you. Uh, compliment your local team already so that is what we're going to be doing so so congratulations on being the western new york region winner of the dri award the city of dunkirk again congratulations <laughs> Now, as I traveled the state making announcements about these awards for many years, we often would counter leaders of smaller communities who say, well, we don't quite have enough projects for 10 million. You know, it's kind of a lot. You know, I know we, we, you want a vision to execute on the whole amount, but you know, is there any chance that smaller communities can compete for a lesser amount, for example? It's like, that sounds smart. Uh, why not? And so we announced last year, uh, first ever, we have it called the New York Forward Awards, which are $4.5 million awards, including some money for planning, that can just help maybe finish a vision a community has or to jumpstart and be a catalyst for more investment. Again, these are all catalysts. When I talk about that word, it's a catalyst for private sector investment. Every one of our DRI communities has been successful in not just the $10 million that we give and support, but also that attracts other businesses. When people see success, they see a downtown coming back, they see the buildings uh, getting that, uh, you know, the, the the luster brought back to them with streetscapes and connections to waterfronts. We start doing that, other people start paying attention. Mark my words that all of our communities that are award winners here today will start seeing others say, you know, boy, maybe I want to move there. Maybe I want to bring my business there. Uh, so, so that's what's going to happen. So 
I'm really proud to announce that our, among our very first winners of this new initiative we put forth last year for our, our smaller but mighty communities, uh, I'm announcing that the villages of Lancaster and Wellsville will each receive $4.5 million in New York forward. So congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations. You know, I, used, I know Lancaster very well. I used to represent in Congress. Um, spent a lot of time there and got to know the people. And um, especially during the pandemic, you know, we were very concerned about the viability of the downtown because we had done so much to bring it back. The West Main Street project, uh, cleaning up you know, the, the sewer lines and the rundown curbs and all the things that make you feel like a community is kind of run down. You fix the curbs, you put in some trees and benches, all of a sudden there's new life. I felt it, even my hometown of Hamburg, which had lost its luster for most of my life and now that is back. So I know the value of these initiatives. So we, we walked, we talked to the business owners, hit so hard by the pandemic. Uh, I think we went to the coffee shop and Bloomsbury toy shop. I need to get back there because I have a grandbaby now. <laughs> and I actually have someone to buy toys for. Uh, three dog barber, is he still doing okay? It, it has, you need, gentlemen, you need to go to this bar. You want to feel pampered, uh, go to the Three Dog Barber, which uh, opened. I'm glad he's still doing well. But, you know, I saw a growth in new businesses and an energy there that you know, always could have been, but it wasn't until new leadership and a belief in these downtown areas. And people wanting to be in downtowns. People want to live in downtowns. And for far too long, our downtowns comprised of one story or, you know, first floor retail shops and businesses. But no one takes advantage of the upstairs. You know, maybe it's storage, maybe it's you know, just vacant space. That's where people want to live. Not everybody wants to have a car. They ride their bikes around. You get everything they need there. And Uber doesn't help. It doesn't hurt. I mean, you can take Uber if you don't want to have a car. So life has changed. and We can put more focus on our downtown. So, so we're going to have more upgrades for the people who want to bicycle around. Uh, what you're proposing is to make the village more livable and healthier. Those are great objectives. Uh, walkable streets, outdoor fitness center, Okay, that sounds great, uh, new bike lanes. And also, again, uh, we, we wanna restore some of our historic buildings. You have some real gems there. Uh, the Opera House, the Masonic Building, the Boys and Girls Club. So, so take, take again the ideas from the community, create a mobility hub for people to gather, and it's all part of a holistic plan put forth by Mayor Ruta, congratulations. Mayor Ruta, please take a, a bow to everybody. Thank you for... <laughs> further down in Wellsville. Oh, Wellsville is so charming. Have you ever seen the pink house? I mean, that, that pink house is a, it's a built in 1866 or something. Started then, done in 68. Uh, it's on the National Historic Record of National Registry of Historic Places. It's amazing. That's just one, one jewel you have there. But uh, a lot of great homes and and village, the down or the city is downtown, and it's just it's, it's it's a beautiful place. It has such potential, it really does, Mayor. And I know you know this, but again, people live there a long time and just don't always feel it. What others see when you see uh, the charm of it. So you want to take your assets and let them be catalysts for uh, other businesses to come. And I know on Main Street, the former Rockwell Department Store uh, could become housing. You know, bringing that life and that energy downtown and making more retail space, or the municipal building could become hospitality space. Uh, the Grand Theater, so many of these downtowns have charming theaters and they, they're just expensive to maintain and sometimes it just gets to be much, but they're all, a lot of them were built around the same time. That was hit hard by COVID too and they need some help getting back on their feet because that often is the, the center of activity. People go to the theater and go to the movies and you know, I think there's such, such, such great, great, great opportunities here. And the other thing is, you know, we talk about Dunkirk being on the water here. You've got great water, you've got the Genesee River. Genesee River has a great story. Um, people think about Genesee beer, they think the river is flowing with beer. That's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Uh, but it's, it's a beautiful river. You know, it goes all the way through from Rochester through Letchworth State Park, or I've jumped off every cliff. Well, now there's signs that say you can't. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I used to as a child. I think that's why I'm a risk taker. I'm not afraid of anything. My dad would let us all jump off the cliffs into the river. Um, but I have great memories there as well. But, you know, I know you have a great vision, Mayor, and for the Sinclair Barrel House, uh, what we can do there, apartments. Again, I keep focusing on apartments because one thing we have is people who want to live in our communities now. We didn't have that. We didn't have the jobs. People were leaving. And now we have to build the housing and create housing into spaces uh, and our, even our older buildings. So that can become a place to welcome people to the waterfront. It can be 
restaurant, it could be housing, uh, it'd be extraordinary. So I'm so excited to know that there's people out there, people in this room and the ones who couldn't make it here today, who believe in their communities so deeply, who love them with such passion that it brought you here today. And as governor, but just by allowing a check, uh, these aren't really real checks, but they'll, we'll get you real money. <laughs> but knowing that just we can be the catalyst that jump starts a new energy and a sense of pride in your downtowns, that's what gives me the most pride. And what I love so much about being the governor of New York, there is so many communities that feel like a long time no one paid attention to them. I know this because I'm from here. That era is over. Every community, regardless of size, regardless of population, matters to me. So this is deeply personal. I want you to shine. I want you to go out there and just say, we are a fantastic community. People want to be here. So we're so livable and viable. And if we can be help, if we can be support and help lift you up, uh, that is what I'm going to do, continue to do every single year that I have the privilege of being your governor. So I want to thank all of you. I also want to recognize we're joined by County Executive PJ Wendell here as well. We've uh, went through a lot together. We went through a lot together uh, during the pandemic, uh, and I know we're going to continue working together to bring our communities back, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that you were here as well. But uh, uh, to all of you, congratulations. Give yourselves a round of applause, and let me present these checks. Don't take them to the bank, uh, but the money, the money is there, I assure you. I assure you. So congratulations, everyone. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to invite up Mayor Rosas to give us a few words uh, on how you feel right now, Mayor. On behalf of all our city residents, I would like to again welcome the governor here to the city of Dunkirk. Uh, and I thank you, Governor, for the support that you have given our community here in Northern Chautauqua County. It has been, uh, for me, a learning experience since I came into office. I knew that we had issues that we had to deal with. Uh, and the main issue was that uh, we needed to have a catalyst, a spark, to get things going in our downtown area and our waterfront. Uh, and we started to do that. Uh, little by little, we started to get to the point where we are ready now. We're ready to, to take that giant step to become a destination here in Western New York. We believe that this plan that we proposed will help us to bring in folks from the Western part of the state, which I'm talking about the state of Pennsylvania, state of Ohio. This will become a destination. I want to thank your staff from Empire State Development. They have been very helpful to our staff. They provide a lot of guidance and support, and uh, for that I thank you. I also want to thank all the members of the Regional Economic Development Council. Uh, it was about three and a half months ago that we went out to Buffalo to present our plan, and uh, we immediately knew that uh, there was something there. Uh, the response that we were getting was that it was a good plan. And obviously, it was. So uh, I thank all the members because to have that vision, to know that this city can prosper, that this city can move forward, we needed these funds. This is a game changer for our community here. And I stand proud to be the mayor that brought forth these funds here. I also want to mention that we don't work alone. We have partners at the county level. I want to thank Mark Geis and his team, the planning team at the county level. They have been very helpful to us. We worked together with them, and this plan was no exception. They helped us out. They worked with us. And uh, for that, I'd like a round of applause for the county team. <laughs> and last but not least, I would like to thank our team our Department of uh, Planning and Development. Uh, there's a lot of time, work, and effort that goes into these plans. Uh, we don't always agree on all the uh, planning that goes on <laughs> behind the scenes, but in the end, we came to an agreement on what I believe is an excellent plan. 
So I'd like a round of applause for our team. I would like to acknowledge that uh, the planning department has been uh, directed by Vince DeJoy. Vince, could you please stand? And I want to mention that within the plan, there are 10 different uh, projects that we presented. Uh, among them is obviously our marina, but also we're looking at the water park. We're also looking at Jamestown Community College having a presence here in downtown Dunkirk in the city of Dunkirk. I know that there are plans underway here at this hotel to remodel every single room. I'd like to give the owners uh, applause here for that. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my lovely wife, Rosita. At this time, it's my privilege to introduce to you the Honorable Mayor of Wellsville, Randy Shaler. First off, I'd like to express on behalf of everyone in Wellsville, our thanks to New York State, Empire State Development, REDC, and especially Governor Kathy Hochul. We really appreciate it. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge and, and call to your attention the individuals from Wellsville who made this happen, who are why we are here. And if I can call them out, and they will be recognized a little bit later, but um, business owners, Mr. and Mrs. Andy Glantzman, IDA Executive Director Craig Clark, uh, and then the people who actually rolled their sleeves up and, and put in the application and did all the work. Uh, Mike Raptus, Melody Kellogg, who is a ex retired executive who moved back to Wellsville from California because she realized Wellsville was a place she wanted to be and has brought with her all her talents. Uh, Alfred Housing Executive Director Allison Green and Village Treasurer Melissa Mullen. Thank you. You're the reason we're here. <clears throat> now, some of you may not know much about Wellsville, certainly those who, who reviewed our application do, but let me just give you a quick background on Wellsville. Wellsville is about two hours south of Buffalo. It is uh, the largest metropolitan area in Allegheny County. We boast a population of 4,500. Um, it was founded in 1851. It does include such beauties, beauties as the Pink House. Uh, we also have a railroad station that is, goes back to the turn of the century and a number of other another of other facilities. Wellsville has suffered the same thing that most small villages have, and that is it's got blight, it's got economic problems, and we were hit especially hard within the last five years. Um, our largest employer left town, our largest retailer left town, and that left behind or created a cloud of unknown, uncertainty, uh, fear in some cases. There was more than one person who asked me if my job was going to be to turn the lights up. Um, we stepped up. The people of Wellsville are very resilient. And we did step up and take some actions. We created the Economic Development Board, the Wellsville Economic Development Board. We put together the DRI committee, and also we have something called the Wellsville Development Corporation, all looking forward to growing the economic base within Wellsville 
and enhancing the downtown area. Uh, I'm proud to report that, that the recovery has started uh, and things are, things are looking in the right direction. Uh, a Texas company has chosen Wellsville to be the headquarters for a division of their corporation. And this is, they have moved back into part of the old dresser Siemens facility, and they are taking advantage of the workforce and the, the knowledge capital that exists within Wellsville. This is very, very positive news, and it's, and it's relatively new. A Minnesota company has chosen Wellsville to uh, expand and add a retail location. So consequently, the, the Kmart building that was an eyesore that, that many villages, towns, and communities have, uh, that is being refurbished as we speak, and that will be a runnings department store here very shortly. Um, the people of Wellsville, as I say, are resilient, and they're very appreciative. We value the, uh, the small town America lifestyle. We are small town America. We have a, a, uh, we have a movie theater. We have a, uh, a Texas hot restaurant that's been in business for 100 years. We have a number of, of things in Wellsville that say we're small and we like it. We like it that way. Uh, <laughs> When you look at the, the value to us of this award, it's substantial. It's substantial. It's not only four and a half million dollars, which is substantial. It's not only that, but it is further justification and it is a recognition to the people of Wellsville that, hey, you're headed in the right direction and you're doing the right things and the state of New York is behind you in, in some, and supports what you're doing. For that, Governor Hochul, we're very appreciative. <laughs> At this time, I would like to introduce Honorable Lynn Ruda, who is the mayor of the village of Lancaster. Thank you so much. And to the SUNY Fredonia students who are here, I'm a proud SUNY Fredonia alumni, so my advice to you, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> is to dream big, to work hard, and put your time in, and great things will happen. To Governor Hochul, to the state of New York, to the Western New York Regional Economic Development Council, and to Empire State <clears throat> Development, Somehow today, thank you just doesn't feel like enough, but sincerely, thank you for believing in us. Thank you for seeing our potential. Thank you for recognizing that we have the capacity to take this funding and turn it into transformational projects that will uplift our community. It's been an incredible journey to this point, and we have such a bright future ahead of us. The village of Lancaster has had its share of hard times dating back to the 1960s when a series of fires broke out and destroyed many of the buildings in our downtown core. Our business district never recovered and remained stagnant for over 50 years. Growing up in that community, my memories are of vacant storefronts, empty streets, empty parking lots. I remember looking through the chain link fence thinking we deserve so much more than this. We have so much potential, but we couldn't see the path forward. Governor Hochul, you've provided that path, and I can't tell you what it means for you to recognize small communities. This support of the New York Forward funding is a game changer for us. It is proof that you are yet again a champion of the little guy, that you are here to support and you recognize the importance of villages and of village life and that you understand 
that we have a different unique set of challenges in being a small community, a historic community, and this New York funding will help change all of that for us. I am surrounded today by an incredible team of people. Here from the, the Village of Lancaster, Deputy Mayor and Trustee Joe Quinn, Trustee Cindy Maciejewski, Trustee Tyler Soika, our department heads, Clerk Treasurer Mike Stegmeyer, DPW Superintendent Bill Cansdale, Attorney Art Herzig, Planning Commission Chairperson Mike Reinhold. But in addition to our village staff, we're also surrounded by an incredible group of Lancaster supporters. We have representatives here from business owners to residents to building owners, resident uh, representatives from the Lancaster Area Chamber of Commerce, the Lancaster Village Merchants Association, the Lancaster IDA, the Lancaster Opera House, the Boys and Girls Club. And this is how we do business in the Village of Lancaster, collaboratively. We have one unified goal, and we work hard together to see through to that goal. I'm excited today for our future because at one point it felt like we didn't have much of one. And all of these entities have come together in support to celebrate what we have and push us forward. So this is so much more than just a dollar amount. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for us to uplift our community, to help them dream big and to show results. Governor Hochul, during the West Main Street ribbon cutting, I told you that this was just the beginning for the village of Lancaster. And I said that we were going to work hard. And here we are with this New York Forward funding that is gonna help us cross the finish line. This funding is going to provide us with the opportunity to be a beacon for the rest of New York State to show how a community who has fallen on hard times can uplift itself. We'll show them the path and we'll show them that it's possible. This funding is an opportunity for us and we will take advantage and we will work hard. So today we celebrate, but tomorrow we're ready to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Thank you so much. Please remain seated for the presentations of the checks. Thank you, Dunkirk. Great, thank you, Dunkirk. Next, Wellsville, Mayor. And the team from Wellsville. Thank you. Okay, next, Village of Lancaster. Okay, big group from Lancaster. 